Welcome back, my fellow poets, to another Spooky Saturday video. To those of you who stumble across my content for the first time, I am your narrator, Paranormal Poet, and I narrate true paranormal scary stories who focuses more on atmosphere rather than visual aid to terrify you. So sit back, relax, and step into the world of the unknown. The world is undeniably intriguing, bringing with it a whole host of new discoveries. Animal species, plant species, so many discoveries, until we hit the metaphysical discoveries. That's where it gets interesting. We know that whenever a Ouija board is played, the idiomotor effect takes place, causing our mind to communicate subconsciously to the body's reflex to move the planchette. But there are stories where even with the idiomotor effect, unexplainable things happen to the victims afterwards, especially when you don't say goodbye. Tonight I will share with you two Ouija board encounters that will have you terrified. Let's begin, shall we? Story 1 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Mario. I have a story for your audience that they might find interesting. The thought of the paranormal made me laugh. It couldn't possibly be real. I was going to be proven wrong. This event happened in June of 2013. It was a normal day to start with, playing video games and catching up on my favorite YouTubers videos. That day, I had an unexpected visit from a friend. We spent a good amount of time that afternoon just talking and joking as all friends do. While we sat on the couch, chilling and bored, not knowing what to do, he turned to me and asked, Didn't you say you have a Ouija board somewhere? Let's break it out, come on. Now with a sense of new purpose and excitement, we stood up and headed to my room. The board ominously was laying there, exactly where I'd last left it. As I went to pick it up, I felt a jolt of icy cold chills run up my arm. Looking back on it, that was the board's way of letting out a sigh of relief, as if to say, finally. Both of us sat in the middle of my room and looked at the bolded black letters. One thing my friend did when using the board last was recite a chant, a verbal invitation allowing only positive spirits in while strongly discouraging violent, angry, and demonic entities from speaking. We didn't do it this time. That was my first major mistake. We put our hands on the planchette, and I asked the following. Is there anyone here? Allow yourself to be known. We sat with eyes focused on the planchette. Then it began moving. I figured it was him and followed along with it. It briskly moved to the words, yes. My friend then asks, where are you at the moment? Then right on cue, something taps loudly on the inside of the closet. Both of our heads snap to the location of the sound. That's where another mistake was made. We both stood up to face the noise, not realizing we had taken our hands off the planchette. More knocking emanated from the closet. What would happen next would chill me to this day. With eyes staring intently at where the noise was, behind me came this deep, breathy male voice saying, Careful. Followed by the power to the entire house being cut. My heart began to race and I got an instant chill down my spine. What's worse, my friend heard it too. He hurried to put the board back in the box. We bolted out of the room. The last and final mistake we made was not saying goodbye. To this day, the taps continue to emanate from that closet, but also outside my door, taunting me to unleash whatever was in there to play it again. Story 2 Hello, paranormal poet. My name is Hunter, and this story I have to share with you is very traumatizing. 
with a good ending, but sad realization of sorts. Stick with me. This event took place in August of this year. The day was a relaxing, ordinary one. The weather outside was fair and beautiful, and my friends had stopped on by to hang out for the evening. Mainly, we were on our phones, scrolling through social media. As we sat there, mindlessly scrolling, my friend DJ turned his head to me and said, Bro, you know what we should do? Grab your Ouija board. Come on, man. Let's play. I was taken aback by this. He usually wouldn't be the one initiating the thought of playing a Ouija board. Either way, I was down for it. I always had one in my room ready to go, as I partially dabble in what kids nowadays call witchcraft. Upon entering the room and making eye contact with the box lid labeled Ouija, my friend later recalled feeling a strange, uneasy feeling in the air. I set up the board in the middle of my bedroom floor. I cleansed my space and invited the curious, positive spirits to talk. When the planchette had our fingers on it, I thought it would be funny to scare him, so I slowly moved it a little bit. This unfortunately didn't scare him though, but what would happen next is truly eerie. I asked whoever was present, when did they die? The planchette slowly moved to the two, zero, zero, one. After that, I asked if it was a male or female. It didn't move. I would find my answer soon enough. At that point, DJ got uninterested, and he said he wants to do something else for the rest of the night. I moved the planchette to goodbye and thought it was going to be over. I was wrong. Upon standing up and opening the closet door, I saw a pale-skinned apparition of a little girl in a white dress. I couldn't see through her. She was in full, exactly like I saw my friend DJ. She was there. My heart began racing. As I turn on the light, she disappears completely in front of me. The whole event was pretty bizarre. I've only ever seen spirit orbs, but not apparitions. The day after, I decided to look up the significance of the date, 2001 and possibly a murdered little girl. And to my horror, on April 5th, 2001, in Highlands Ranch, Colorado, a father by the name of John Bishop snapped mentally and systematically went room to room with a low caliber rifle, killing his wife, Cheryl, along with his son, who was only nine, and his two twin daughters, both being six. No one knew it was coming. They were all found in their rooms. Hence why I saw the little girl that night. This truly was a traumatic event. If you have made it to the end of the video, comment down below your favorite story or what gave you chills. Please give this video a like, subscribe, and feel free to clip your favorite moments to share with friends. It will truly help. I love you all, and until next time, farewell poets.